the conflict is exacerbated when people shift blame. And the way to solve that is take responsibility for the role that you are contributing to the struggle, right? And so, you know, if, um, you know, if, if there are issues that are happening uh, at home, like your, your spouse is spending a lot of time out of the house and it's really making you angry, you address the need and everything, but you also ask yourself, well, what, how am I contributing to this, right? Am I, you know, as soon as my spouse comes home, am I, you know, like immediately complaining about the fact that he wasn't home before? right? Um, saying something sarcastic, like, oh, you know, how nice of you to finally join us, you know, and is that encouraging me to get my needs met? Is that allowing that to happen? Also, the um, understanding that the way that your needs, the way you want your needs addressed can be very different from the way you want your, your spouse wants their needs addressed. So for example, you know, um, everybody experiences love, respect, care in different ways. So understanding what your spouse needs in order to feel loved is really, really important um, rather than assuming. So for example, you might be a person who in order to feel loved, gift giving is very important to you. When your spouse brings you a gift, um, that really makes you feel loved. And your spouse may be somebody who, you know, if you help with the dishes, that is a way of feeling loved. And so if you're giving gifts because that's your way of feeling loved, or it's called love language, if that's your love language, it might not work for your spouse. And so understanding what they need is, is particularly um, important. Um, and so I'm just going to end with one uh, final point, inshallah. Um, which is the idea of how we sometimes minimize the good and we magnify the bad, right? And so this comes down to the idea of gratitude, right? And our brains fall into the trap of looking for these, for these negatives, right? And so instead looking for what your spouse is doing well, magnifying what they do well so that they feel loved and they feel uh, affirmed and it encourages them to do more, right? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, la in chakartum, la in chakartum, la nakum, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's promising us here that if you are grateful, then I will certainly give you more. So if we're grateful for the, um, for the, the, what our spouse is doing right, one of the most amazing manifestations of this uh, ayah is that the more you choose to see your blessings, the more blessings you eventually begin to see. You're training your brain to focus on what you have rather than what you lack, right? And so in doing that, you also allow yourself to, you know, focus on the changes you want to make in your, in yourself. And one of the most important ones in that is prioritizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, one of the things that, you know, research has found is that in marriages, there's a correlation between people who reported reading Quran daily reported improvements in their marriage during social isolation, like during this uh, COVID period. Um, and then also that people who have a close connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they found that there was a positive correlation with marital satisfaction as well. And so finding things that make you feel connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allow you to prioritize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be very, very meaningful in also improving and preventing that side of the conflict, right? One of the one of the the roots of conflict is naturally going to be shaitan, right? And so, by giving more as much space as possible to your relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you lessen the amount of space that's available to shaitan to create that conflict. And so, that's something that will also be very meaningful um, in relationships as well.